back for a very riveting hangout right now with our David and our Claudio. Supreme Law. So evening, gentlemen. Good evening. How you doing, Karen? How I'm you doing, okay, Dave? thank you, Claudio. What? what? Hello. I was on mute then. Um, good evening. Yeah, I'm very excited. You, David. Yeah, I've pinned it. I've put a clip on it, so it's all good. Thank you. Yeah, so we're here today, guys. So, David, do you want to say something? And then Claudia can show us some slides. Do you want to say anything, David? Um, yeah, well, uh, we're going to use this uh, presentation to um, to explore an area that uh, we've just labelled their supreme law. And we have a, um, I don't know, I'm not going to go on too long, Claudio. Don't worry, I'll let you uh, oh, good, we'll steal your thunder. But we've got, we got, yeah, we've got oh, a, an idea of no, uh, of uh, of international areas of um, covenants, that word covenant, covenant. Um, I'll not break it down now, but it's not just um, a simple word in itself. It may have connotations in, in other areas, jurisprudence, you know, authority, political areas, um, human. We're going to look at uh, the words and the international stylings of um, the human rights and what are, if we was to ask you now, the room, while we're getting ready and warming up, could you please list what you think your human rights are for me, for me and Claudio and Karen, then please make a list now so when we're on the replay and premiere we can see what go on, but we've got uh, a simple pathway, rather than having to understand the uh, the language that we often talk, you know, the Latin, the Latin, the legalese and the uh, babble English and then uh, into codes or um, you know, Bible speak, and then the various different laws. We've uh, we've had a chat, Claudia and, and I, before, and uh, we discovered uh, he's he's discovered that there are certain key points in the uh, various from I don't know 1948 to early 30s. I don't know about 40s to 98. There are some uh, areas of which we may have skimmed upon and not looked in deep enough. So everybody that's got uh, a covenant, you know, human rights uh, ruling there would be able to use what we're about to discuss tonight. So this is some kind of uh, international Magna Carta is what brother there uh, referenced it as. So I'll leave it as that. There's a, so I'm very excited about it. Let me tell you, this doesn't mean that uh, we forget everything we learned. This is a, an in, in addition to what we've learned, a polishing of the armor, um, shield, sword, and you know belt area of Ephesians that we mentioned. So that's all I've got to say, that I'm very excited and honored to be here. Uh, with Claudio, because I know he's done a lot of prep work and um, he gets passionate about it. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll leave it there. So uh, thank you very much, Brother Claudio, in advance for what you're about to bring with us and what you've done there. And thank you, sister, for linking it up like, you know, nice one. Hey, hey, hey. Same to you guys. Thanks very much. Anyway, love you, David. On to you, Claudio. Love you, Claudio. Hey, love you guys all. Love everybody that's going to listen. Um, yeah. Brother David is right. All his work that he's doing, I mean, he knows the ins and outs of the court system over there. I don't even know the ins and outs in the court systems here because it is a bunch of minutia that you got to understand how to get in and out. You still, if you have a brother like David that can take you through uh, your system and know the ins and outs, this is very, this is a very good, simple understanding too of what David and his team will be doing and helping uh, establishing our rights because it's in there. So uh, we've teamed up together to uh, come up with this presentation and, uh, and uh, help, help out the, the cause. It's, it's awesome. It, you gotta thank know you that. so much for all that, Claudio, because obviously you're doing it in your own time. You don't take any money, so thank you very much. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, uh, our freedom is, is our wealth, right? So that's what we're, we're aiming for. So the intent is to show you how simple it is. And once you understand it, it works in every single country because it's all the exact same as Supreme Law that they all signed up for, and you'll see that's part of the presentation. So before we, before we get into it, um, I just wanna say it's real simple. There's two categories. There's a human and there's a corporation. And you're gonna see how many games, so if you just keep that as the premise in your head, that there's a difference between a human and a corporation. Everybody's gonna say, well, yeah, of course. Well, what law has done is they put one word over top of both, and that's person. So when you see the word person, you think, oh, that's a human. No, it's not. Under Black's Law, it says it's both. And there's the, where the shell game begins. So that is the theme throughout here, and we'll show you the lies, the 
the deception, the illegal use of words, illegal use of the covenants, the breaches of the covenants of what they've done to hide this. They've done this to hide this because they don't want the police to know because it's the police, every government agency, employee, officer, whatever, must uphold the common law as enumerated in the international covenants. So keep that in mind and uh, we'll go over a couple of slides whenever you guys are ready. Go for it, Claudio. All right, I can see you. All right, so I'm gonna ask you guys to ask me some questions because I just see my conversion is just finished now. I gotta upload it to, uh, to uh, yeah, just to let everybody know that Claudio's got a video for us to watch, but it just is taking a while to upload and he spent a long time doing it today. So that's uploading then, and you've got a few slides to show, so that'd be brilliant. Yep, it's the same, it's the same thing, as, it's the same as the, as the movie. So um, if, if you can just talk for two minutes while I just get this started uploading to, uh, to the uh, YouTube, that'd be great. Excellent. David, do you want to say anything now? Um, Shanka, Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. Love you, Max. Shot, Love you. Shots fired. Um, shots fired. Um, well, yeah, we got universal non-sectarian remedy coming up for uh, many of the uh, ears out there. And uh, get a pen, get some paper. You will need to research and use your own due diligence. In the meantime, we are going to um, add this. Uh, referencing to the already strong notices documents and communications that we use under the doctrine of notices when we uh, when we we say law but it's actually legal you know if any of you was to apply for a job i bet none of you would apply for a, a legal secretary's job but effectively that's what you're all being asked to do every day is administer legal positions in your life so um, legal is not law but they call law you know what you know is a law is legal and what this is, this man and I am about to present with Sister Karen here is international law. The word international is a bit of a sketchy word in itself if you break it down. I'm not going to do that now, but uh, we're going to look at eventually you know, doing a treaty, a declaration, a proclamation. So we know that we are man when he says human there. I'm not going to necessarily agree and concur with every single iota of this presentation, but I'm 90% sold and, and on it because of various reasons and the language and the church and the state being mixed over here for the Anglo Isles. So um, the world's resources are going to become man's common heritage again. And these entities and legal things and uh, appearances and spiritual, you know, possessions of property, we're going to fix it all, hopefully, in the next few presentations. I'm going to use this presentation as part of the Sovereign Stars show and introduce Claudio to my playlist on Indy, um, Karen, uh, and uh, I'm going to get him to come with a chat, well, come for a chat with me and Kevin, reference the articulation of all of this international um, covenants, because it's quite in-depth and it is relevant, and if you use them all, all in unison, not all, but the relevant ones, they back each other up and it will cut a lot of the uh, confusion out whether or not to use a red pen, a blue pen, whether or not to use the magistrate, the high court, you know, the, the jurisdictions, the jurisprudence, the language, the types of notices, how, who you send it to. This is clear cut, plain and simple, um, cutting out the confusion and very effective because it's, it's, it's recognised at the higher end of uh, independent um, jurisprudence, courts, jurisdictions, you know, the, the Hague is a war crimes international one. You've heard of the Nuremberg from the German um, Hitler ordeal and the and 14 or so Nazis that were brought to justice there at that and the Hague, um, you know, and the international covenants of the, say, the Geneva Convention for wartime conflict. Yeah. So he's got the slide yeah. up now. Are we good? All right, I filled. There you go. You asked me to fill. I did my job. <laughs> I'm excited. Take it away. Hey, you're more, you're more than a job. You're more than a job, my lovely David. That's funny. No, you can keep going, brother. It's okay. I mean, we're on a no, show, we're ready. brother. No, we're ready. no, no. Let's break out the. Uh, let's break out the ice. All right. Oh, it's gone. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Right, I'll just get you up on screen. There you go. I'll flick over. It's on my phone, but it's not on the computer. Hello? Yep, still here. Yeah, I don't see it on the computer. I see it on, oh, hang on, here we go. Now, when I press the icon, it don't, you don't come up. 
Hmm. You just come up as an icon. The actual document's not. Oh, there, that's it. Right, we're there now. We're there. You got it? Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm just going to briefly go, and it says it's got about a half an hour to upload to YouTube, so maybe I'll be through it by then. It's just that these slides are on top of each other, the images and that, so you won't get the full effect, but people can watch it later, I guess. Um, anyway, what we're going to talk about here, uh, this joint partnership, SPLS Pro and NI Udemy, to, uh, we're going to teach you about what Supreme Law is, which is the same as common law. I know people in Canada, they, it's amazing how they play with words, common law, you think of marriage but it's not common law means law of the land, the supreme law. You're gonna learn about corruption, what de facto laws and government means, and that what they've been doing is crimes against humanity. So I go through a basic outline, detailed facts, examples from different lands, showing you how they're playing the shell game, and then showing you that um, even what they do with every indigenous person and how they've still deemed them a class of person so remember, when you hear that word person, they're making you a corporation, a subsidiary of that country, a subsidiary corporation where they limit your rights. So um, you can see how we're being deceived through operation of law, de facto laws. So I'll just read a little bit here where it's highlighted. This phrase is used to characterize an officer, a government, a past action or state of affairs, which must be accepted for all practical purposes, but is illegal. So this, thus an officer, king, or government de facto is one who is in actual possession of the office or supreme power by, but by usurpation and without lawful title. I'm gonna show you that it's so simple. There, there is a clause, breach of contract, where they did not educate us that we have a choice to be a person. So here, here's the game. Here's how they limit, here's how they limit you with person. In ICCP Article 16, everyone, which means human, has a right or a choice to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. So that means they're giving you a choice if you want to be labeled as a corporation, as an artificial entity. All right. There's a, you have, that is your right. And those international covenants, and I'll show you that these are real, these are laws. These aren't just human rights, uh, you know, whatever. No, no, they're laws, they're signed, and everybody knows it, because I'll prove it, because they're meant to be in, in, the, in their constitutions. So um, here we see that person means corporation, artificial person, juridical person, citizen, Indian. I'm not going to read all these, but look how many uses they use and redefinitions of them. Why do they have so many classes of person, they call it? Remember that I don't want to be classed a person you got to say that all the time no matter what you're talking to anybody if they call you mister if they call you doctor if they call you driver if they call you anything no nope. that means person which means corporation i'm a human i have full legal capacity that means your full legal capacity is in the international bill of rights which is the human laws so you don't need any of these you don't need any of that because these all limit you you do what they say puts you in bondage, servitude. So here is the Human Rights, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICTPR. It's the rule of law, it's the supreme law, and it's over every government, AKA corporation. 173 countries have signed, ratified, ascended, succession, however they wanna play it. They're all in there. I've seen videos from people that show and prove that you cannot even form a country unless you go through the United Nations and sign these documents because that has the human rights in there. But what they also done in there is kept their buddies from being able to, sorry, they kept their buddies to be able to continue to take your money. So they're in the ICCPR, it has both corporations and humans. And it's pretty obvious in how to use it. All right, um, now people talk about the Magna Carta. Well, you can see from the, from the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Supreme Law, is a Magna Carta for all humanity. When somebody says we need to rewrite the Magna Carta, they already did it. It's already been done. They've been spending all this time trying to hide it. And I can show you with all kinds of different uh, uh, minutia. Dave can contest to this. I mean, sorry, he can, he can add to this. So many different dates 
what they did as smear campaigns when these things got signed, and you'll see more of that later. So starting with this, you can see down here at the bottom, the UDHR 1948, the ICCPR and the IC, IC, ICESCR were both signed in 1966. There's a huge gap. Why were they stalling? Well, in, 19, in the ECHR, the European Convention on Human Rights was made in 1950. This was setting the stage. You can follow the dollars, follow the smear campaigns in the media, on TV, that make you look the other way. So the International Bill of Human Rights, the Supreme Law, contains a Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Sorry for this, guys. The video would do this automatically. Which has the UDHR, the International Covenant on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights, and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. I'll be referring to them as the UDHR, ICCPR, and the ICESCR. The hum anything that they've done, any other Bill of Rights they've done in any country was to remove your rights, to limit you. You got to know that. So here we go. ICCPR, Article 2.2 were not already provided for by existing legislative. Now, don't forget, they all signed this, that each state party, which means a corporation, which means a country, must put it in their constitutional process. Oops, sorry. If you see right here, you can see they must put everything that's in the covenant into their constitutional processes to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. So just to show you, I'm just, Supreme Court judgments, as far as I'm concerned, I will find proof, we will find a proof, Dave and I will find a proof. Supreme Court judgments are the supreme law, so they can go from court to court to court across the world. The word Canada, here's from a Supreme Court judge, does not refer to Canada as a geographical unit. In other words, it doesn't own any land. It refers to the juristic federal unit. As you seen earlier, juristic person, see artificial person, artificial person is a corporation. So the judge is telling everybody they're a corporation. They're not, a, they don't own land mass. They're just like a human rights management company to manage everything going around you, but they've done more than that because they were stealing us blind in our labor. So here we go. I'm showing you that. The chief executive officer, this is from the Canadian Constitution. The chief executive officer is the queen, okay? She's given the temporary duties to the governor general. So the governor general is the acting CEO. So you need to find out who your acting CEO is because that's who you send the, your claim of right to. If you don't go into court or anything else, everybody should do this. Send your registration of live birth with a claim to the governor general, whoever the acting CEO is of your country, send them a claim. I'm putting them online. I'm showing you examples how to make a claim. And with David, we're going to do that for, you know what I'm saying? I'm help David do that for the UK. Help people do it further because he knows the UK more than I do, right? So, but this is all something that we, this will bring everybody together in the world. This will bring us together. This is one love. So here's how they set the stage. The UK was instrumental, so now we, gotta, now we know where to follow the money, right? So here is, I'm going to just move some of these out of the way. Here are the dates that are sorted in, in, sorry, here's all the countries that signed in order of date. So you can see that they started, Costa Rica started signing in 1968. I can zoom in here a little bit. Costa Rica's 1968, 1969. So what happened in the 60s? Remember that, right? There's like Vietnam War. Here's the things that we're tracking, showing all the staged events to keep you looking the other way. They are so ridiculously timed. And so now here's Humphrey, the Canadian, who was very instrumental in creating and drafting the UDHR. This is a known fact. You can look it up. So why is Canada the land of the free? Because they had him, Humphrey, in there. Yeah, right. He was, he was protecting the corporations, okay? He was protecting them. So here's the dates again, right? I told you about. And I'll look at here. Canada signed in 1976. One day later, Britain signed. The UK signed, sorry. Same thing, not anymore. I'm not sure. Dave could help with that one. So they tested, and then next thing you know, the next day, they ratified. So they signed. Canada didn't even sign. Doesn't mean anything. They're ratified. 
because you can look in Canada's constitution, they tell you that they must follow the international covenants. They tell you in, in different ways. They don't put it right out to you. They make you find it. That's John Spirit from EternallyAware.com. If somebody wants to go follow this stuff, he does it for Canada, but he also does U.S., Russia, but it's all the same. So here we go. Now we got the U.S. So the United States took a little bit longer, 1992, because they got guns, right? So in 1992, look at this, early recessions. They did this intentionally. They put it into recessions. You're not going to have time to figure this out because the word, all these signings and all these words, people knew. They were partying in the streets in the 60s and 70s. They were saying all the freedom songs were coming out. They knew this happened, but they couldn't get the word out to us. So they pulled the wool over our eyes. In the early 19, 1990s, the U.S. was in a recession. Go figure, right around they signed. Look at this, peak global unemployment. See this at the bottom here? Peak global unemployment was in June 1992. How do you like that? Around the world when the powerhouse United States signed, ratified, standard. This is just for people that want to look. You can go get this online. I said, I just sorted it. Here's all the other ones. There'll be, there'll be always news surrounding all these invasions. When they talk about invasions, when you go back here, sorry, I'm going to move back real quick. When you talk about all these here, you will see all the different, the, uh, Kennedy, uh, Martin Luther King, invasions of different countries, uh, Robert Kennedy, all these assassinations and all these different things surrounding them, whether they're true or not, I don't care to get involved with it, but I do know they're smear campaigns so you don't find out the truth. So the other one here is, why the attack on Maldives? Maldives has a reservation. This is beautiful, people. Their reservation, the only reservation they made, no exemptions, no nothing. They just said the application of the principles as settled in Article 18 of the Covenant shall be without prejudice to the Constitution of the Republic of Maldives. Well, when you, I started reading through some of the reservations, everybody's talking about Maldives. There's 113 matches of the word Maldives, and three of them belong to Maldives, 110 belong to everybody else. Here's Article 18, really important. This is key. Everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right shall include to include freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief of his choice and freedom individually or in community with others and in public or private to manifest a religion or belief in work. So with all the ands or ors, you've got to really pay attention to the ands and the ors because they make you think that this has to do with religion. It doesn't. When you read the green, it's everyone has the right to be free either individually or in community with others. And I'm going to say it again. Everyone has the right to be free, either individually or in community with others. Thank you, everybody, so much for showing why everybody had such great reservations against the Maldives. So it's really important that you look at the ors and their ands. And here's some trickery in the UK. So this is from Wikipedia. They use all these different, they use common law, they use Human Rights Act, they use international law, they use Human Rights Act, European Convention of Human Rights, and domestic litigation. You don't need, the only thing, you see these red ones? The only time you need these, and the only reason why you need these is because you've got to start with them to show how they've breached your rights in these two green ones. The human rights that come from common law and the international law, which is the bill, which is the UDHR, the ICCPR, and ICSCR. All right? So we know that the UK signed in 1968 and the campaign for incorporation, the first public call for incorporation of the convention into national law. So they're incorporating the convention into national law was made in 1968, all right? Well, upon ratification, here's what they say in one of their, re in one of their reservations. The government of the UK reserved the right to enact such national nationality legislation as they deem necessary from time to time to reserve the acquisition and possession of citizenship. So there you have it. They want to acquire and possess citizens, corporations, persons, slaves, servants, servitude, whatever you want to call it. It is a form of servitude. 
and there is there is a, an article that says they can't they can't put anybody in servitude and they're doing that because they're not telling you your choice so quick recap 1948 international bill on human rights these are laws supreme law 1948 1966 the different covenants 1950 the european council on human rights and then 1998 the human rights act and then their domestic litigation you need these in order to show that they're breaching a fundamental human right and freedom and that's where you can then seek remedy if you want the judge has got no choice so long as you do it properly in canada if you don't use it right there is a note that went around to every law person officer judge attorney crown attorney uh supreme court if you go walk in there with blood marks on the paper if you walk in there saying anything other than these laws and the way they're enumerated and the way they're worded and written they mark you as a vexatious litigant so as a vexatious litigant they throw you out they don't listen to you they don't hear you at a hearing right there's certain words you got to do at a start you got to bring out the supreme law and that's called I'm here seeking the administration of justice. Those words bring out the Supreme Law. And then the judge will say, well, what do you got going on? Well, the state party, Canada, is limiting abridging like fundamental re human rights and freedoms as enumerated in the, in the Constitution, Bill of Rights, whatever it is for your country. You show them which article, which law that you're talking about that belongs to the corporation. You show them the international law that's breaching it, you're done. I'm simplifying it, but it ain't that much harder. And this is where we gain strength when we all have this knowledge. So this is, uh, I'm gonna have to move some things around here, but uh, so here is the House of Lords Library. And you can see as of March 26, 2020, the government has proposed setting up a constitution. Well, wait a minute, they signed in 1968. And here we go, sorry. Or as I understand and claim that the state parties, you need to add these to your claims. Or as I understand, You're doing good, Claudio. Thank you. Whereas I understand and claim the state parties must take steps to give effects to all rights in an international covenant through the constitutional process. Well, there you go. The UK is in breach of contract, in breach of the International Bill of Rights, Supreme Law, because it hasn't even incorporated into the constitutional process. They know it's coming, though. They must know what's coming. We're not provided by existing legislation or other measures. Each state party, the present governor, undertakes to take the necessary steps in accord with its constitutional process. I read this before for you guys. And recognize in the present covenant to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. They haven't done it. They haven't even done it yet. Canada's done it. Many have done it, but they hide the fact. You got you to know and learn where to go and steer. But guess what? The communist countries, the ones they try to make us not feel good about, and they're, they're not good people. Well, communism means common law. When you go look at the Russian, you go look at the Russian constitution, they show you your choice in black and white. You can be a corporation or you can be a human. That's why they call them communist countries, because they haven't quite fooled everybody there yet, but it's over. So. Wow, you know, Claudio. <laughs> we know that they play the shell game. We know that they have limits, right? And they know that they know that we know that they are they are trying to protect their money, right? Well, they have all these statutes, codes, and regulations. It'll drive you nuts. But all you need is look at this: the ICPR is twenty-five pages. The do the HR is eight pages, and the ICSCR is eight pages. There's a lot of redundancy between the UDHR and the other two because they got to carry them. But a lot of these are just for corporation. So out of those 41 pages, you may only need 10. You may only need to learn 10 pages and you're done. They don't want you to know that. It's that simple. Into the nitty gritty. Okay, so the UK Interpretations Act, this is where you got to look to see where they redefine it. This needs to be in your claim. Interpretation Act 1978. Let me zoom in here. So Interpretation Act 1978, and note that the ICCPR ratified in 1976. They were forced to retain your rights and freedoms, but right after they 
did their ratification in 1976. In 1978, they defined a person. There is their definition. This is where you got to start. Person includes a body of persons, corporate or unincorporate. No, 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 no. I want to be human. I have the right to be labeled as a human. Remember, I have the right to be recognized as a person before the law. So my right to be a person before the law, no, thank you. I don't want to be a person before the law. No, I want to be human. I want my full legal capacity, right? Now, this is important. The word includes, because they use the word includes up here, right? Is there a lag or is it following me? You're doing good, Claudio. It's perfect. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so Black's Law 3rd Edition includes. I'm not going to read all that, but basically what it says is the S. When you have an S in there, it closes it. It puts it in. That's it. You can't alter it. You can't add it. You can't change it. When if it says include, then that's open. And they use it. I includes the queen, da, 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 but they can throw in anything they want in there when they just use the word include. But includes closes it. And Dave's probably going chomping the bit with that S there. I know he is. <laughs> Which I know because he, he's seen it before. So you need the Human Rights Act. Dave and I are going to have to go through this more to go look in, in detail what it is in there, right? To find out where the breaches are. So basically, you can take the you can take the the articles of the International Bill of Rights and those covenants and place them against those and make a standard set where everybody now knows where everything's at. You're done. You don't need all this litigation and all this minutia. You really don't. But you got a claim to them. So. I made this caption because, and I'll, I'm going to add it. Uh, I'm going to send Karen a link. I put it. I, I created a claim that outlines the whole process, and gave it to people in Canada. And it's very simple to make it to any other country. You just got to change a few things. The rest is the same. And the claim there shows you that the police must uphold common law. So if you don't want to wear a mask, the policeman has to uphold your light rights. We need to get this to the police. Why do you think there's a big smear campaign to the police? Because they use the police to uphold their corporate laws. But it's written very, very well that they must uphold common law first and foremost for humans. If you want to be designated a person, they can decide which one they use. Guess which one they're going to use. They're going to use their statutes, codes, regulations, de facto government stuff. Right. Any questions so far? Dave, do you want to jump in? No, yeah, I'll just uh, yeah, I'll let Karen go first and see if she's got Oh no, that was it. Just wow. Brilliant, Claudio. These are uh, um additions to uh you know use to what we've already what we've already got got in our uh, armory, but we've also got um the right you've got the right, man's got the right to choose just to use these um, on their own. This is what we're saying. That there are certain applications. If you have a right to be recognised as a person, then you also you can decline that. You can respectfully decline the offer to contract, as we've found out under the true, you know, uh, contract laws to be honourable and correct and with clean hands. So agreements, contracts, offers, and public commercial obligations and liabilities. There, you know, is what we find really assumptive and presumptive. So. For those that aren't really following and wondering why this is maybe so important is because we live in a legal realm where we're considered at public and liable and we are private um, albeit you know we're, uh, apart from the, the, the considerations at the minute and uh, we've had claims put upon us and if you don't claim you know and, and make a put a claim in now um, and change certain public you know obligations duties requirements expectations then and um, you know they, they have certain rules. This society, it's a law society. It's London City, the Square Mile, the United Kingdom for us over here, for the uh, Anglo Britain scribes and initiates. But elsewhere, in America, you'd have Washington as your um, you know uh, main area. So we look at these uh, with regards to. You've heard him, um, Brother Claudio, mention UDHR because he deals with this all the time. He's, he's some, you know we're abbreviating the Universal Declaration of Human Rights from 19. Um, 48, and that is a it's quite a um, historic document as far as it goes, adopted by the the United Nations General Assembly, um, but not Decemberish I think 1948, and um, the 58 members of the 
um, 58 members uh, of the United Nations, 48 voted in favour, um, none have voted against, eight abstained from that 58, 48, four, eight didn't vote, and two did not vote. And the, the declaration has got lots and lots of articles in there, so different sections of it will be applicable for different scenarios. But what we're going to tailor is, where as mentioned previously, letting the officer know um, our claim. We have got a claim to make. You do in this realm, as we've said about benefits, you have to claim for benefits. You you make a claim in a judicial you know realm, and if you claim it, you name it, kind of a thing. So you claim what um, you you are you know entitled to. When you use your free will, we can't do it for you. Then um, these are rights, additional rights that you should you should rely upon that are quite high. Whereas before we've we've used. Um, ambiguous parts of constitution or we'll, we'll say free man policy methodology and we'll say um, you know the the sovereign aspect of it as well the self-governing initiates of self and then we've got trust law we have ecclesia the church law you hear that word covenant you have you have certain rights uh, respected and given to you you know socially politically culture your cultural rights and and like I said that question at the beginning I'll be interested to see who answered what they think their, their human rights are. And, uh, you know, we are at war, um, to be fair, not a physical bomb, bombs and guns, but there's a lot of uh, hardship, receivership, guardianship, boat people's ships moving in on our land and, uh, and taking the, uh, I don't know, the assets, the collateral, the liquidity, and they're moving it to offshore havens. We have had, uh, you know, significant uh, respect days of com com commemoration of the of the war that's passed and the landings and D-Day, the great wars, and we were told, um, you know, to lest we forget, and we were told lest we be de be deceived in the scriptures. So it's kind of you know the covenant there. That's the key word: um, religious, political, social rights, um, your rights, um, how you view your rights, and if you're going to give them away and submit them, then feel free and carry on. That's very well and good. And remain in the public and at the public liabilities and, and kind of as a debtor and in sin where we are not here to preach you know uh, such things as christianity catholicism or, or even you know vexate or aggravate what we're here to do is to say we have uh, we've seen a way through that uh, you've got to remember that these human rights i've got the, the, the there's many of them is mentioned quite a few that i'm not going to we'll go through later and we'll put them in the details and any you know notices and publications uh, you know the breakdown of the uh, different relationships but they are normally international covenants covenants and uh, a covenant is a scriptural you know reference there as well and um, we will have to you know reword some certain parts and stuff but we, whilst we are doing notices and claudio's picked up from i don't know tube facebook and our interactions that we are looking at talking to higher levels of the of the government for correction on the administrative level status standing and capacity then why wouldn't we talk um to the others the generals that are a part of the international um, army that are kind of on our side if anybody out there was to be looked at as to being on our side well, when we say um you know the city of london i don't mean that london city is alive i mean that the, the entities and the corporations and the businesses the persons that operate within that under in america you've got american english in france eh? You all have uh, French, English, in Trinidad and Tobago, you have certain types of English. India, you'll have Indian English, and the legalese that's wrapped in there, the Latin, and the other stuff that's, you know, it's very. But, um, slicing of the, uh, of the atmosphere, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's respectable. And um, if you're going to notice and move your way forward, you know, in a corrupt state such as this one we find London um, taking over and um, London town taking over Italy so they have the obelisks there the biggest obelisk is in the Vatican and uh, the two obelisks in London Washington they've uh, they've been allowed to take over the land masses of all the battles and the proclamations and the you know constitutions and the rights and the freedoms and the acts and the bills and the orders that we pass we seem to be getting less off less better off so um we, we recognize that these additions which will will let it be known you know where uh, there are war it's quite measures disgusting though, David. it's quite disgusting <laughs> yeah. to make wear those masks and make it legally binding when it can't be yeah that's your position your persons and 
how do you explain, you know, human, man, flesh and blood, whichever way you want to put it. So we've said grant or set law before. So we have autonomous uh, blood taken at a neonatal, um, you know, where the Guthrie card for the Anglo that I mentioned earlier to prove that blood, flesh, heartbeats, you know, souls are present rather than legal instrumentation. So you're legible by that's like the human person, the entity, citizen, people, you know, monster is a creature. If you go to Black's Law and you look at the definitions of when we look at people, we find that that's coming from uh, well, persona, persona, the mask and etc. Humans, monsters, entities, creatures, they have no regard for us. We are classed as belligerent and um, deserting of a, of a position. We're just a yeah. for them to play with, that's what it is. But, um, Commerce, yeah. Claudio, uh, did you want to say any more then with what David said? Um, no, I mean, he's, he's bang on, right? I mean, everything he, he's, he's very well versed, very well studied in this, in this capacity. And I know, uh, uh, we're just going to keep getting better and better because we keep learning more and more. Obviously they didn't educate us. So we got to educate ourselves and Dave's done a great job educating himself. And uh, this, uh, I, from across the ocean, being able to use a collective conscious, AKA the internet is here for a reason. It's here to get us out of this. It's here to get us back to one level. Can I ask you something right now? You've covered quite a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do any more talking right now, or just let the public see what you've done? There? Uh, I, I, there's only a few more slides, if you if you don't mind. Oh yeah, you know, go I'm for done. it. Yeah, I thought you'd finish that. Yeah, yeah go for the slide. This part's really this part's really quick, but just so I finish uh, finish this off. There's a couple little examples I just want to show. Yeah, and, then, uh, ask you and I know we'll be doing more. We'll be doing more more in deep, but this one is just to get you. Uh, your head around the fact that you've been classed you have been classed you are segregated you are 100 percent in servitude to them so yeah i'll just go real quick then Dave, david are you yeah, can say anything else before i carry on can i ask you something is the video that you're uploading is it this in a video yes, it's, or is it, it something so it's else automated so you know i don't have to move things around and everything else so yeah it's the same thing so we're good Okay. If this is going well and I'm getting across, then you guys got to be the judge of that. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, carry on, Claudio. David, do you want me to say anything more before I continue? No, we crack on, brother. It's, uh, it's all good. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, so. Thanks, David. Here, here you go. In the UDHR and the ICCPR, Article 6 in the UDHR, everyone has the right to recognition as a person before the law. Before the law. This creates no obligation. It's a right. It is repeated in the ICCPR. Article 16, everyone has the right to recognition as a person before the law. Really strong, really important, needs to be in your claims. There's a set process. Dave will, Dave will tell you how it goes. I'm sure it'll be all in his documents. So here's how many times, here's the word person. In Black's Law Dictionary, seventh edition. I got all the I got all the Black's Law Dictionaries, one through nine. Unless there's a ten out, I don't know. A legal person, artificial person, person, a human being, an entity, a corporation. Look how many times they got to use person. Why? Why do they got to do that? Because they include corporations. So that every time they got to they got to rename it so they can protect people. Whatever the hell they're doing with it, you don't need it. Don't ever use the word person, even the one that they say is the natural person. Don't use it. Don't use it. Use human. You can use it. You can use the litigation where they say natural person, and I'm going to get into that really quick. But yeah, so here's here's legal person versus human. You don't want to ever be a legal person either. Life, because life, liberty, and security. You're in. It's it's in the international covenants. It's in most constitutions, and they talk because they have to say. So a legal person is an artificial entity, a corporation, and you're not alive. Obviously, you've designated a human, you are alive. So that, yeah, well, we need to have life. Yes, a human does have life. Does a human need liberty? Absolutely. The legal person is controlled statutes, regulations, and jail time for things like cannabis. You should never have gone to jail for cannabis. Human law is common law. Do unto others. Yeah, you'll get jail time if you break common law. Thou should, you know, Thou shall not do things to others, you know what I'm saying? If there's a book, I don't want to use those not positive words, right? 
When we have victims, yeah, when there's a victim, this is a big bone of contention across the realm. When we have officers, state troopers, uh, you know, constables, officers, whatever, say there's a, there's a, there's a, a criminal offence, it's either criminal or it's an offence. And then, yeah, we have, uh, we have civil issues that are being um, time taken up by the officers, troopers, um, collecting levy, fines, fees and fortunes right. for Audrey. corporations when there is no victim present. Yeah, and it's an administrative, you see, civil issue. So may I just wind up by saying, um, Claudio here, he's used to the abbreviations, but if you're wondering, the ICPR is the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, and it's, it is part of an international bill of human rights, along with the International Covenant on Economic, Social and cultural rights and the universal declaration of rights so you just you go on like you just say i see cpr but if anybody's wondering what that is before you go Thank searching you. i mean, i tied it in the beginning which is a, it's really yeah, yeah, it. yeah we'll expand later it's all yep. good just while, while i'm here the, it's very key yeah how we play this we have instrumentation and implementation of instrumentation is key there so you know, uh, God is no respecter of persons, and I hope this is clarifying a certain areas for folk. Um, I yield. Yeah, no, perfect. Because I, I want people to interject to make sure that the, the the word that we're trying to get across to you comes across. So thanks, David. So examples of the switcheroo. So this is going to be really quick. Um, the Interpretations Act in Canada. Okay, here you go. I showed you the UK one. I want to show you what they do, how they re-derive when they have to remove you from the class of person and put you back to the human, they have to do that in a couple of cases. So for Canada, in every enactment, person or any word expressive description of a person includes a corporation. There you go. There's the word includes with the S. So person can only be corporation or any word restricted description of a person. That's that long list means corporation. So Canada's telling you right there, if you use anything to do with person, you're a corporation, you bow down to us. And that's it, right? Even so, so even if you claim, sorry, but if you, we, we come across this, the all caps name, everybody's familiar with known as the strawman, the fiction, the entity, the estate, etc. But you have a natural person as well that is a legal entity, which has different rights to the all caps, normal corporation type name right. there. So every time right. you, they, you, yeah, that's yeah, a, so. That, they just, they just did that as an internal game. So they know who they're up against when they come for remedy. So this is good because where you'd see, this is what I like about this kind of chat and chirp and chat, where we'd see the definitions of natural person then for Canada, you'd think you were in the safe, but oh, I'm not, that's not the fiction, it's not the right. all caps, it's not surety, right. it's the creditor. Right. It's got natural, it sounds good, but then it's got the person, which is the bad part again, right. we're no respect to a person, right. so right. yeah. Right. I'm going to show you that Canada does redefine it. Watch this, this is really good. Watch this. So. I'm going to show you. So when you use the word person, it means corporation only. Throw out only enactments, codes and regulations, unless they redefine it. If one were to look at the different enactments, like the Immigration Act, go figure. They want to possess some citizenships, right? The Immigration Act does not define the word. The Banking Act does, and the Criminal Code of Canada does. Hmm, I wonder why. So this is really important. you got to look at your interpretation code. Every act, make sure you go to the definition section and see if they're playing the game. They'll probably be doing the same thing in every country. The Immigration Act won't. The Banking and the Criminal Code will because here you go. This is the Bank Act, all right? Here's the Bank Act in their definition section. Person means a natural person, an entity, or a personal representative. Oh, well, which one are you? How will you know which one you are? Why do you know which one they're talking about? If you if you stand under there and you want to be a person and you haven't never made a claim, they're gonna guess which one they're gonna put you into? An entity, a person representative. But they had to rename the natural person in there. Why? Because when you go to get paid, and you won't get you won't get paid under all caps, right? If you go there and seek remedy for breach of the international covenants, they gotta pay you remedy. And they're paying the natural person. They're, they can't pay the corporation. You've already opted out. So oh, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? They had to redefine it there. Where else do they redefine it? They redefine it in the Criminal Code of Canada. There you go. Everyone, person, owner, include, look at that. And then they put the word include. So that means anybody else can go in there under criminal. But everyone, by definition, is human. So the Criminal Code 
can't throw a corporation in jail for doing something not good. So the criminal code had to use the word everyone so they can throw a human in jail. But they can throw the person in jail too for doing cannabis because you don't know your rights. It's that simple. Oh, they've got it in here. They had to. They had to put it in or there would have been a breach right from day one. All right. Some examples of supreme law, fundamental rights and freedom. I'm just going to a couple of them. Here's natural wealth and resources. ICSP Article 1.2, all peoples, which include humans, may, for their own ends, freely dispose of their natural wealth and resources. So I'm not going to read the rest, okay? Your natural wealth and resources are yours to do what you want with. You don't have to pay taxes. You, don't, you can pay taxes if you want. If you think it's a good thing and it's it, nobody's taking any money, nobody's making profit, and you're going to build a road or do something together, yeah, I want to chip in. I, I understand. It's good, but not if somebody's going to be taking my money. So that they can they can gain their wealth, it's right here. There it is. They know done. Also in Article Forty Seven, nothing in the present covenant shall be interpreted as impairing the inherent rights of all peoples to enjoy and fully utilize their free and freely their natural wealth and resources. Okay, one more thing. I just wanted to quickly talk about is the Indian Act, and then I believe we're done. So here's the Indian Act in Canada. It's going to be the same everywhere. Indian means a person. Done. Came over. They're still classifying you with restricted, limited, certain rights. They've classed you as a corporation person. You still belong to Canada. So you can get things? Wow. Hmm. Yep. You're a corporation. So they had a feeble attempt here to show you with an oar. So who pursuant to this act is registered as an Indian or is entitled to be res registered as an Indian. So they're playing words. And that's it. More to follow from SPLS Pro and IUDEMY. That's it. I, can, I got all kinds more examples I can go through. I got examples of how you don't have to wear a mask, how you can stand out in public, how you, what you should put inside your videos when you do them because you have all all those rights when you claim them that way and every corporation must uphold common law youtube google all them you can give lawsuits to them if they take down something that has nothing to do with hate speech or anything else if it's truth and it's positive and it's loving and it's gonna it's gonna take down these guys they can't do anything you can sue them and guess what many ceos all over the world are going to get sued for the poisoning of, of monsanto Monsanto stocking, helping everybody stock their shelves to illegally create uh, their stock market to go up. Illegally non-sold inventory stays unaltered and has infinite shelf life because it's full of poisons. That's what the whole game was. Ponzi scheme. Chrysler does it. Everybody else does. So thank you. Just a couple of credits from the people that uh, I got their images from. God bless them. And as David says, I yield. Oh, thank you, Claudia. That was brilliant. Um, yeah. Do we want to do we want to finish now? As that's been said, quite a lot's been said today, and obviously we want people to digest it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm good. I'm good. I just this is a, a great start, I think. And then Dave, whatever you want to add in at, at this moment, or we'll be back. Either David. one. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be brief, but because um, yeah, there's a lot to explore within that, you see. Whereas we've got. Uh, a lot of work and studies going into our fourth year this December. So we've collated and professed and um, articulated many in various areas of um, cutting edge. I don't know in this renaissance and uh, every week, you know, if not, not a day, something new comes up on the horizon and additional too. So we uh, we're simply putting more strings in our bow to make a more powerful shot and to hit the mark. And we have a list of uh, priorities of how how we um, communicate, you know, the language, the style, and who and what and where. I've sent Claudio some um, raw files that we are looking at, you know, notices, declarations, proclamations, and we've got a lot of, uh, you know, things to consider here. But uh, the mixing of church and state is where we find ourselves and why we find ourselves here. If uh, for Anglo Britain, um, you know, terra firma, Anglo firma here that. Uh, and we've had the, the 1066 Doomsday Book, 
um, you know, and, and the land and the proclamations and the divvying up in kings and wars and um, the uh, Bulla Papilla from the Unam Sanctum and uh, the, the playing start, of though, David, isn't it? It's a good start to try because obviously you know it much better than everyone else. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is that uh, for everybody, yeah, it, it's it's reassuring because this will tie in because whereas some some folk are thinking or brothers and sisters initiates will be thinking, you know, is this who does this work for? How do you use it? It'll it'll blend in with uh, just about everybody, and because we've got many and various claims put upon us, um, these these um, you know um, declarations and uh, evoking much like we showed with the common law when we've always had statutory and common law arguing against each other with sometimes constitutional input. We've now got um, common law, statutory law, and then we've got the equity and trust and the positions within the triangle we've shown you, um, and the, the autograph with the thumbprint and the living flesh and blood, uh, biblical grounds or, you know, set law or well, legal. So we can use these um, on their own and um, they can, you know, they can stand on their own and they've stood the test of time. And we can use the definitions like where we've said person and legal and entities and all caps and lower and the grammar, the text, the subtext and the context within all of this. Um, it's not normal language. It's really great language. how um, Claudio sort of explained about the S and what the S means. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's applicable to births, deaths and marriages and birth certificates. We've talked about that before and that's why I said this rings true with the... And then the um, the uh, Justinian deception, uh, I think it was Romley and Rowan picked up a couple of days after my cast about that and uh, went on about New South Wales and Australia and the uh, the Queen's linkage there about includes and what lands and yeah so we've got uh, we've got what I was going to say is we've got uh, some some real strong points here to say that you have a right to be recognised. This is just one of many. It's not the only thing we're taking from it, but to be recognised. But you have. The right to remain silent, you know, in other realms as well. You have rights, so you can evoke those rights. You've been going on quite which, a lot. You've been going on quite a long time about common law, haven't you, David? You've mentioned it quite a lot on our hangouts. Yeah, it's key and imperative that we that we've just got a lot of definitions. It is public, and it won't it won't defend your property. But we have rulings where if the uh, if the argument say if you can't get a remedy at common law, um, statutory public area level, and you evoke the uh, the rulings of equitable realms, you know, the equity and the, and the, the realms there, you will get a remedy you know, more than more often than not. So like with what we've shown you with the argumentation of the statutory common law, sometimes constitutional, then the introduction of equity, this is common law, international common law, and uh, it's recognised and stamped and validated. And if you breach these ones here, this is equivalent to starting a war, I would argue. I'm not saying this is no legal advice here. But if, you, if you breach, if you, if, you, if you can prove that someone's breached your human rights, it's effectively, yeah, your rights to so your property. So why, why didn't that court So this is, this is why it's good. This, this is why I'm liking this, because it cuts through and it's effectively, if you can prove in a court of law you've been damaged and your human rights have been breached, you're in for a big win because it's effectively like somebody starting a war on you, you know, because they've disrespected your rights. So we can cut out constitution, statutory. We can still use what we've learned, but this this will basically um, gold plate our <laughs> our armour. <laughs> so is that you feeling me? I yield. Yeah, thank you, David. That was really brilliant. But you just made me realise something with what Claudio has been talking about because there's a court case out right now and they don't use any of those words in that court case and they don't even add half the names. Because I think other people should be on there, but um, yeah, I, that's uh, probably explained that that court case isn't real. <laughs> I'm not sure what what you may be referring. Well, I put it, I put a court case out that's come up where half uh, uh, an AI company is taking um all these people to court, including Barack Obama. They're all in there. Um, companies, Google, you name it, they're all in there. Except. Other people aren't in there because obviously other people shut us down, told us to wear masks, told us to clap for the NHS, shut the economies down. Anybody that got involved in that needed to be on that document because it's against, it's about genocide, it's about concentration camps, it's about taking our rights away. I'm with know. you now, I'm the Sara Jasara yeah. tip. Yeah, yeah, they this didn't is use this any of those yeah. words that Claudia has written. They not, didn't use, I don't remember reading any of 
those words in there. So that is it's because what we find is because this is when we know we're right, because we find in all of the, the only constant out there in YouTube, Facebook and the, the various 4chans and Reddits and other, you know, domains that we can get information and help and resources from is that there's a common, no, not all of those ones, but generally um, Reddit and 4chan are a bit more honourable than the, uh, the other ones, but Facebook, the mainstream media, platforms have uh, thought leaders on there they have the same commonality between them which is the information they leave out they have many and various claims and um, you know methodologies and uh, and fees and schedules mm. and donations and documents and cards and everything like this but they won't go to where the guts of it is like what we found the, you, you have the right to uh, recognize there is there is something here in your face like we, we need to anyway. rewrite the Magna Carta it's already been done as Claudio said here look this is it <laughs> Do you think Go it's on. a good time to, to stop now, though, David, with all that information? Because yeah, some yeah. people, they yeah, just, just, just pin it. Yeah. yeah well, it's I know that you two have been working together, and I know that, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. I just hope everybody enjoys what they're being told. Because <laughs> it's, um, I like the saying, what is it, power to the people, to be honest. Or power to the humans. Is that a better word? See, yes, see. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, we, we say we've been going for an hour now, masses of information. We're going to be back. There's going to be other parts to this. Thank you um, so much for everything. And um, yeah, to David, mwah, to Claudio mwah, in the chat room, we'll be back. Won't we, guys? Absolutely. Love you all. And uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, brother. We're going to have a lot more work ahead. Yes, yeah, so I the right. The I gotta fight for your rights to party to uh, to exist, it seems at the minute. So yeah, the mandates for the mandatory um assumptions that may be coming. We shall uh, rebut all of this uh, with full reproach. So thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Lots of love and uh, thank you to the room to the initiates and the scribes. Bless. Well, thank you, David. Thank you, Claudio. Thanks to everyone for listening. It's bye from us. For now, that is. Thank you.